a world where species of all kinds coexist. Mother Nature is at the center of it all. But what happens when humans take more than they deserve? Let us show you the consequences of our actions. This is Planet Globe. This is one of Mother Nature's most luscious aquatic ecosystems, the kelp forest. These kelp plants average about 175 feet tall from the ocean surface and provide shelter for dozens of marine species. But they wouldn't be the same if it weren't for one particularly fluffy animal. This is the sea otter. Native to northern and northeastern coasts of the Pacific Ocean, this animal spends most of its time playing, eating, grooming, and holding hands with others. These small creatures may be cute in their size and appearance, but the impact they make is quite a big one. Sea otters are natural predators. Their main source of food is not quite what you would expect. What they eat are small, round, sometimes toxic to humans, and covered in what appears to be spikes, otherwise known as sea urchins. These organisms are like parasites. They latch onto the bottom of kelp plant, eat through its stripe, and finish as the rest of the plant detaches from the ocean floor and drifts up towards the surface. Without the sea otters, these monstrous creatures would double its population and eventually eat all of the existing kelp forest causing the ocean critters to be threatened by many things looking inside and outside the ocean. We see that these sea urchins are causing great damage to the kelp forest ecosystems, which in turn is harming other marine life, like various fish and invertebrates. On the shores of Alaska, for example, the kelp forests are home to more than 20 types of fish species. And without them, they don't have anywhere to live. They don't have any protection. However, thanks to sea otter predation, we find that there is a decrease in sea urchin population density. This supports biodiversity. This supports the many, many benefits that the kelp plant bring. When the sea otters protect our kelp forests by ridding them off the sea urchins, it allows for the kelp population to increase. Kelp, however, is very good at observing and isolating carbon in the atmosphere. What are some benefits of this? Nowadays, the carbon dioxide has become really excessive in our atmosphere. This poses a big problem because it leads to the issue of an ocean acidification and global warming. So what you are saying is kelp helps prevent these things? Yes. Think of it as an underwater forest, you know? The kelp does the same thing as any other plant whose skills is to absorb carbon dioxide. Now, there are other sea plants that can do the same thing, such as the eelgrass. But it can't do it on the same scale as the kelp, whereas the kelp forests have been attributed to absorb anywhere between 10 to 10 billion tons of carbon dioxide in a year. Now that's a lot. But in California, we have lost about 95% of the kelp forest due to the abundance of sea urchins nibbling through the roots of the kelp. Okay, let's create a scenario here. What would happen if all those sea urchins gobbled up all the kelp left in the world? Well, you see, without kelp, the pH level of the ocean will ma majorly decrease, as mentioned earlier. About 25% of coral reefs around the world, which, by the way, supports around 7,000 marine life species, will eventually die, meaning that all marine life that depends on coral will be in critical danger as well. Not only that, but the newer generations will have to live without seeing a single fish in their life in such case happens. That's an interesting thing for you to bring up because in your book you mentioned something similar in regards to global warming. Oh yes, absolutely kelp forest protects against global warming. Global warming is detrimental to everyone on earth, no matter where you are or who you are. So do you believe that otters play a very important role in our world because they protect our kelp forests? Absolutely. My little babies are important to the ocean. The impact these creatures make is quite extraordinary. But as of 1977, sea otters have been classified as an endangered species. 
My name is Professor Walters and I study at the Ocean View Aquatic Institution. This is Wiggles. She is our newest sea otter pup and she is super friendly. Walters has been studying sea otters for nearly 10 years and attending the institution for almost three. What has led to sea otters being classified as endangered and why hasn't that changed? Humans have been the number one threat to sea otters for centuries. There is a long history of humans killing sea otters for sport and pelts. Thankfully since sea otter hunting has been illegal but their issues don't stop there. What are some of the other threats? Most of what else comes to mind still has origins in human activity. So for example, there are sea otters who get tangled in fishing gear and nets and some are even hit by boats. What do you consider to be the most critical threat as of today? Just listing things off, I believe it's oil spills, pollution, disease, and loss of habitat. It is really unfortunate that these kinds of things happen to animal species that really have a big role in taking care of our planet. When I think of this happening, I think of other keystone species. One that comes to mind is the axolotl. They're this small relative to the tiger salamander found in the lakes of Mexico. They eat other animals and maintain their populations in their lakes. That's how they support us. But despite what they do for our planet, they're very much critically endangered. Axolotls maintain the fish population and eat salamanders, as previously mentioned. They control the water quality of the lakes and provide a healthy food source for Mexico. Without them, Mexico, much like the kelp forest, would fail to stay a healthy ecosystem. This doesn't happen to just these species. It also happens to the red pandas, the little brown bats, ladybugs, macaws, and deer. What is unique about these creatures is that they play a role where they are not only benefiting one species, but many other species in their own ecosystem. For example, the sea otters are responsible for providing food resources for sharks and killer whales. Red pandas are the prey themselves because they provide food resources for the Himalayan black bears and the snow leopards mainly. Then for the axolotls, storks and herons rely on these critters for survival as well as maintaining the ecosystem. In your professional opinion, what will happen if sea otters go extinct? Since sea otters are a top tier predator, sea urchins and other animals will overpopulate, creating a toll on our natural resources. I can envision an increase in carbon dioxide levels, loss of habitat, and more animals at risk. So what in recent years has helped with this issue? I think that the media has played a huge role in helping. Recent campaigns via social media have alerted the masses to our furry friends and their decreasing population. Getting the message out quickly is crucial, and now with new information coming out daily on ways to protect our animals, we've been able to do that efficiently. So what makes sea otters in particular so important in this fight against the endangerment of animals? They maintain other animals' homes and create security throughout the kelp forest. They make sure fish don't go extinct by protecting their natural ecosystem. Not only that, but they protect everyone by protecting our ecosystems. Whose responsibility is it for maintaining animals like these and their well-being? Humans. Humans. Humans, of course. Oh, definitely humans. 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 Humans, for sure. Humans suck. We're the ones that created all these problems for ourselves. It's our job to take care of the planet because we have the capability to do so. Humans have been the main contributor to their downfall as well as our own. It's on us to save them. So what can be done now? How can we support and ensure the success of these animals? We as humans need to make an effort through awareness campaigns and regulations so that we can make this planet a safer place for everyone, especially our essential ocean friends the sea otter. Then, and only then, can we make Mother Earth smile once again.